Boy, it sure is a beautiful day. Yep, nothing bad's gonna happen to me today. No siree. Nothing bad could happen on a day such as... Nope, absolutely nothing bad can happen. Now if you'll excuse me, I must hang out with my dead younger brother who I just got a call from who said to meet him in this old creepy house. <laughs> I didn't know I had one of those. And sometimes I question why I film these things, but then I remember I'm an idiot. can only mean good. weird the closet was opening by itself, but it closed now, so it's okay, I guess. Who are you, little boy with the wild, unkempt hair and a goatee? Boshio. <laughs> no! Ugh, what a terrible review to have a curse. But I'm not gonna hold a grudge. The Grudge is of course primarily a remake of the Japanese film Juwan the Grudge, which is actually the third installment of the Juwan series and the first to be released theatrically. The two previous films, Juwan the Curse 1 and 2, were low-budget directive video movies with the first film also having scenes remade in The Grudge. This remake also had something that most remakes don't, which is the original director and creator of the series, Takashi Shimozu, once again in the director's chair. Which is one of the reasons why this is probably one of the better remakes of a Japanese horror film. It still could have done a lot of things better, which you can see in the original, but it's decent. Equally as rare, we actually have all the actors who played the vengeful spirits from the theatrical Jew on the Grudge films reprising their roles here. Speaking of, the opening text gives us the basics of the curse or the grudge, depends on how you feel like looking at your Jew on today. The story goes that when someone dies in rage, the rage can become so powerful it sticks to a place and will curse all who enter. This is semi-based on Japanese ghost folklore, which goes if a person is killed in a sudden or violent manner, they might reform as a yure, which is a spirit stuck on Earth. And if they are a vengeful spirit powerful enough to affect the physical world again, they are known as an onryo, which is what the Seike family in both versions of these films have become. Even certain physical traits of the ghosts in these films came from the Japanese spirit folklore, like the wild long black hair of Kayaki Psyche, and the white skin which was particularly prevalent on Toshio Psyche. You're up early today. Lone Star! Raspberry. There's only one man who would dare give me the raspberry. Alright, so right off the bat, we have one of my minor issues with The Grudge versus Juan. 
The Grudge kept the setting in Japan, but since this is now for a Western audience, holy shit, do we ever find all the white people in Japan? I get to a certain degree doing this for an American audience, but I feel that it just got to be too much with the story still set in Japan. If you're going to find this many white people there, it almost might as well have been set stateside. That's not my first choice. I'd rather that just with the movie being set in Japan, that more of the main characters cast were Japanese. Either that or they could have said the grudge ghosts don't like white people. Our main character in this version, Karen, is played by Sarah Michelle Gellar, and I'd have left her as one of the few Caucasians in the film. It could have played a bit into an isolation theme of being in a foreign country where you don't completely understand everything. They touched upon this theme very briefly with one of the other characters, but it doesn't really work when you see Western people showing up all the time. With a couple of these, though, it's like a little mini Buffy reunion as Karen Karen's boyfriend, Dougie LaRue, played by Jason Bear, showed up as the idiot Billy, who was the leader of a Vampires Are Cool Club just because he wanted to get turned to avoid dying. And Clea Duvall was also the I get ignored too much and turned invisible girl. And Bill Pullman was Lone Star. And that didn't have anything at all to do with Buffy. <laughs> Both Juwan the Grudge and the not Juwan the Grudge jump around on who's the main focus in parts of the film and in time rather than being told in a linear manner. There's far less jumping around, however, in the Grudge remake as it focuses more on the care worker character with some flashbacks not even really jumping back but being shown to Karen, which gives her more relevance. The Grudge was produced by the Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert team under their Ghost House Pictures production company. So, it might not be a big surprise that we get the awesome Ted Raimi showing up in a smaller role. This also gives me the opportunity to say such an asinine sentence like, Buffy gets sent to work by her boss, Joxer. Sometimes we have to make our own fun. <laughs> But that's really lame, so don't do it. As mentioned, the Juwan movies jumped around a lot more, with a character having their own segment, while the remake took the care worker's plot from Juwan the Grudge and mixed that in with the backstory of the Psyche family from Juwan the Curse. So a lot of stories are dropped in the Grudge, but you do get a nod to the Izumi story from the original when Karen and Doug pass by three schoolgirls on the street, and this was also how the Grudge 2 sort of started. Parts of some stories are changed around to fit the story being more centered around Karen. So the girl who loses her jaw was the care worker who had gone to the cursed house before Karen, where originally it was about another schoolgirl who had lived in the house. Also, that was in the shot on video Jew on the Curse, so yeah, the effect wasn't especially convincing. Yeah. Uh. Sorry. Now, while I think the Juan movie set the creepy tone much more effectively, they also do slightly fall into a series of, Hey, look, here's a new person. They went to the house. Now something bad will happen to them. And repeat. It's all right for the most part, though, because the movie does keep you engaged with its tone, but that probably would be my most negative criticism of the original Juan films. Japanese horror, for the most part, is much subtler than Western, and I've always found that subtle and quieter things are much more effective at being creepy than something loud and in your face. This isn't completely lost in the grudge, as we have the same Japanese director, and there's still quite a few nice subtle parts and other bits that were copied from Juwan, but a good amount of the scenes, like I said, were more effective before. Take when the caregiver first sees the spirit of Kayako by the old woman she's taking care of. In the original, you only see a couple shots of the spirit, one of her shadowy figure appearing over the old woman, then a shot of the eyes in black. Now, the shadow effect here isn't quite perfect, but it really is a much creepier shot than its counterpart in The Grudge, where it's just really doing too much and you see too much of the spirit beforehand. 
In a scene where you're following the family of the old woman, her son returns to find his wife paralyzed after an earlier encounter with the spirits. In Juwan, there's a long build-up with the scene being fairly quiet and the husband seeing Toshio peering over his wife out of the corner of his eye before actually confronting him. In The Grudge, the scene immediately starts loudly, and despite actually having a creepier lighting setup, it doesn't end up playing out quite as well with the quieter build-up gone. There's also a lot of things that play better in the original in the scene that follows the husband's sister. At work, she has a run-in with Kayako and loses a little charm. In Juwan, she only catches a glance at the side of Kayako coming out while making the death rattle. She takes off leaving her charm on the floor, but in the grudge, the charm is snatched right off of her phone by Kayako. This is again too much, and it spoils the charm's payoff a bit. Because when the charm reappears in the sister's bed later on, I found it worked much better when you have to realize who had to have picked it up to put it there rather than just showing you. Things like that seem minor, but they really do play into the overall tone of the scene. The elevator scene where he keeps seeing Toshio on each floor, though, is definitely a part I can say the grudge was able to handle much better with its larger budget, so instead of having to cut back to the sister in the elevator, it can stay on a continuous shot. And I do like them having Toshio get closer as she gets further up. Now, while the majority of this scene in the actual apartment plays out much better in Juwan, there is an extra bit in the grudge I liked. Which is when her brother calls, she tells him she'll buzz him into the building, and then instantly he rings the doorbell. I'll buzz you in. The big change here is after the brother is revealed to not actually be at the door, the scene plays out very quickly and noisier with the sister getting into bed and then Kayako almost immediately pulling her under the covers to vanish. In Juwan, there is again a slow, quiet build-up to this, and this time it lets you get a feel for just how being alone now in this apartment doesn't feel safe. It's a feeling a lot of people can probably relate to just when you get in that mood sometimes when you're alone, particularly at night. She even tries to combat this by turning on the television, which ends up distorting until you can hear the death rattle inside the garbled speech. <laughs> Though it might have been a little better if you only caught quick glimpses of the creepy face rather than having it hold on it near the end. Then when Kayako appears under the sheets first, they slowly rise. Just Everything about this scene really allows the tension to build up so much better than the remake. And yeah, some of the attempts to add the care worker character to the backstory with the teacher and the Saikai family are kind of awkward. I don't think your husband wanted to die. And why would he throw himself out a window? I get why they did it in The Grudge, since Karen was supposed to be the central character, it's just that she really does feel rather inserted into things at times. Particularly when the house just starts playing backstory for her. It is kind of creepy at times, but you kind of wonder why she'd get this played out for her at all, and why no one else did. Other than she's the main character. There is a particularly creepy moment you lose out on due to this presentation of the backstory because, well, it wouldn't really work with the care worker there watching the scene. After the teacher finds Toshio seemingly alone in his house, eventually Toshio goes up to his room, and in Juwan the Curse, the teacher hears Toshio having a conversation with his mother behind the closed door, but once it's opened, he's alone coloring. And he's been coloring things like cat plants. CAT PLANTS! CAT PLANTS! Ahem, <clears throat> cat plants. Speaking of Toshio, the meowing was a part of both films that didn't really work for me. 
He could be creepy when you just see him wide-eyed staring, especially in the background, but the meowing? I'm afraid I have some rather stern words to say about it. <coughs> In both versions, the reason this whole thing got stirred was Kayako became obsessed with the teacher character, wrote about it in her diary, and her husband Takio, finding it, goes insane believing his wife to be having an affair. There are some differences with how things play out, though. Originally, Takio stabbed his wife in the neck, which is what caused the death rattle noise, whereas here, he broke her neck. The biggest changes were, though, that Takio drowned Toshio in the grudge, but originally he didn't even actually kill Toshio. In fact, he'd even asked the teacher, Kobayashi, to take care of him. Toshio was most likely killed by Kayako's spirit, which is also how Takio died as he was still alive when the teacher was with Toshio in Juan the Curse. He did claim two other lives, though, as the teacher's wife was pregnant in this version. So Takio calls Kobayashi from a payphone to let him know his baby was born. It's quite a disturbing scene, but it really wouldn't have worked with how the grudge framed things. Plus, kinda strangely, this puts Takio's death outside of the house. Whereas the remake had him either hang himself or get hung by the spirits in there. Both have their disturbing points, and the changes here really made sense for how the story was being told. Now, the caregiver's story ended originally with her seeing through Kayako's eyes, then realizing she's going to be doomed to repeat the curse as she is killed by Takio. Of course, in The Grudge, instead, Karen tries to burn the house down, which was part of another story in Juwan. And The Grudge ends with a maybe things will be okay for the main character, just kidding, they won't scene. And as we've learned from many a horror film, when the main character dies, at the end, they're A-OK -okay in the next, at least for a bit if their actor returns. So, I guess this scene went like... Oh, you should have seen your face, priceless, kill you later, Bobby. You think I was in heaven? No, you were. The Grudge isn't a horrible remake or anything, but when you watch it, you think there's some of these things that could have been done better, and then you can see them being done better for the most part. Just remember, these are bleak movies, as was the intent, but while Juwan the Grudge sets the creepy tone very well, parts of the Grudge just fall flat. Now, I think there's only one way to truly sum this up. What? I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do the... No.